I have to agree with my ladies in the chat when they say that you just don't think that these stories could get worse. And then you have nights like tonight. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? Thank you to everybody who sent me these stories, not only to Rue for Eyes, Illicit Deeds, and everybody else that sent it. I, I can't give every single person credit. But nonetheless, I thank you guys for being concerned enough about what's going on with these kids. We're going to talk about this individual that you guys see. And there is so much to talk about. So without any further ado, let's get it. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. Now, my news source is actually heavy.com right now, so thank you for this article. The individual that you guys see on my screen, her name is Mariah Thomas, and she is a Kansas City, Missouri mother who is accused of accidentally putting her one-month-old baby in an oven for a nap killing her so the part that i'm not sure if they say or not because i read a bunch of different articles she turned the oven on let that sink in for a moment according to prosecutors who have accused thomas the mother of endangering the welfare of a child according to kansascity.com court documents were filed on february the 10th not even a week ago, depending on when you're watching this, the day after the child died. According to Vine Link, to Vine Link, Thomas is 26 years old and has been in custody since February the 10th. So let's talk about some important details. Prosecutors say that the infant had burn marks on her body and melted clothing, KansasCity.com reported. And the baby that you guys saw on my screen, let me see if I can get that baby's face up here. That is such a beautiful little baby. And this child, and it sucks because we don't know what these babies could have grown up to become. They could have been great, great people. And I think that every baby deserves an opportunity to do that. And let me tell you guys how I feel about mental illness. Because you're going to have some mental illness warriors out there that are going to say, well, Jay, you don't know what she was going through. Jay, you don't know what she was suffering from. Jay, she was just having a bad day. Jay, she's actually a good mother. Jay, I've known her since we were in kindergarten, Jay. And I know she's a good person. And one time she let me color with her with her crayons when we were in elementary school, Jay. And one time she had a piece of her sandwich and she gave me a piece of her sandwich, Jay. A million freaking excuses that they will give these people. And totally forget about this beautiful, innocent baby. What the hell happened here? When police arrived, the baby had been moved to a car seat inside the house and had burn wounds, the newspaper reported, adding that prosecutors believe the mother mistakenly placed the infant in the oven, which I'm going to just tell y'all it's that's it's not a mistake. OK, wasn't an accident, wasn't a mistake. How such a mistake could be made was not explained. The baby died at the scene. Now, according to a probable cause affidavit obtained by KansasCity.com, Thomas is accused of having accidentally placed her in the oven instead of the crib. And it makes me wonder, what level of freaking dumb do you have to be to not know the difference between an MFing oven and an MFing baby crib. What level of stupid must you be to not understand something that basic? And you're talking about somebody who's in charge of leading and guiding and providing for a human life. I would not let this woman watch my goldfish, let alone a human baby. I think that she doesn't have all her marbles. 
I think that she's a few cards short of a full deck. I think that she's a few tacos short of a combination plate. I think that this woman is slower than a bottle of molasses that was left out in the snow. I think that if you let this woman race a turtle, she will probably lose. Okay? All of those things. I'm going to have to clip that and make that a short. That was funny. But what's not funny is the fact that these are people who are in charge of lives. These are people who are hashtag, can we get a hashtag babies for benefits? She didn't love this child. And I'm going to show y'all the large level of narcissism. And I use large as a double entendre. How about that big word for a moment? Double entendre. Okay. According to a proper cause affidavit, this was an accident. Of, to her words, she is accused of telling a witness, I thought I put the, uh, what is this child's name? I will find it because I want to pay homage to this baby. I'll find it here in a minute. She thought I put the baby in the crib and I accidentally put her in the oven. According to ABC 7 Chicago, police were called to the home for a report of a child who was not breathing. We appreciate all first responders who worked the scene and the prosecutors who went to the scene to issue these charges. We acknowledge the gruesome nature of this tragedy and our hearts are weighed by the loss of this of this precious life. Trust the criminal justice system to respond appropriately to these awful circumstances. Now, about her Facebook, which we're going to get into here in a moment. The mother, Mariah Thomas, posted pictures of her infant daughter quite a bit. A whole lot. And matter of fact, I normally don't do this, but how about this? We're going to take a look at some pictures on the big screen. So I'm going to expand this so you guys can see this. This is her active and open Facebook page. I normally don't tell people to go to someone's social media, but in this case, she's in jail. I don't think it's any harm to at least see what type of narcissism she's actually on. That's the name of her page right there. But she constantly posted pictures of her infant daughter. She would post things and said things like, twin, where have you been? T uh, T W I N, referring to the baby as her twin. Nobody knows, nobody knows me like you do, Zariah May. So the baby's name is Zariah. So there you go. Why would they redact it in one and then turn around and put her name in later in the article? But whatever. Zariah, that's the baby's name. She wrote on a, uh, with a post on February the 8th, a person responded to the comment thread, girl, she put this baby in the oven and baked it. SMH. <laughs> Just can't be that goddamn stupid. And be a mother and be a parent. <laughs> Just come on, man. These stories are just absolutely ridiculous. Can y'all please hit that thumbs up? This is about to get so bad. You almost put it on your channel. P well, look, please do. Please do. And I gave you a shout out earlier. Let's, what's up, Rufa Eyes? I see you in the bed. I gave you a shout out earlier in this story. So hopefully if you rewind, you'll hear me shout you out. But much love. Thank you for also sending me this story. Definitely appreciate you. I've got screenshot after screenshot. And, and I'm going to tell y'all, the more I kept scrolling on her Facebook page, I was like, there's still more. She kept posting stupid stuff. On February 3rd, she wrote, my daughter sleeps like she done worked a 12 hour shift with laughing emojis. I honestly don't think that this individual has any idea about humanity at all. With showing a photo uh, of a photo of her kissing her baby, she wrote, Mother and daughter bond. On January 30th, she wrote, I'm most definitely getting drunk on my birthday. January 30th. This is less than a month ago. Actually, yeah, half a month ago. She said, I'm most definitely getting drunk on my birthday and I'm not pregnant. Either. Oh, yeah, I'm most definitely turning TF up. Her birthday was on February the 8th according to Jackson County jail booking records to me. Oh, you know what? Look at that picture right there. That actually might be the one you talk about evidence. Depending on what day she posted this picture. Do y'all see this? What's that in her hand? That is a 
half a bottle of what is that? It's something brown. Is that Hennessy? Y'all know, y'all know our folks like Hennessy. I'm just assuming. And I want y'all to take a look at this picture. What do you guys see in this picture? <laughs> What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> Let me give a shout out to all my poor people out there, including myself. About to tear up some stuff over here. So I got to give myself a shout out too because I'm poor also. But shout out to all the poor people out there. Y'all said as is do say. I don't know what the hell it is. That kind of does look like a Douce bottle. I don't think that you should be a parent and have children if you cannot afford a bed. Ma'am, that is not a bed. And I'm assuming since it looks like it's, and I'm going to give her credit. Maybe it's a queen size inflatable mattress. It might not be because half the picture is cut out. That could be a twin. Or it could be a full. I guess it could be a full. But it looks like it might be a queen mattress because queens and fools are usually about the same price. You should not be a parent having children if you can't even afford a bed and a mattress. And not have the mattress on the floor. Second of all, look at how filthy the floor is. Third of all, she has sheets covering the windows, which is highly ghetto, right? And the thing is, is that bottle of Douce is probably about $75, if I'm not mistaken. $75 to $100. Bucks. That bottle costs more than the freaking bed that she has that she's standing in front of. Yes? Filthy house, I just thought I'd point that out because she talked about getting drunk and turning up on her birthday while being a very, very, very young mother, okay? Thomas wrote that she became a mother on December the 14th, not even barely two months. She wrote, I don't have friends at all. This S-H-I-I -I, sad man and the ones I do got only FW me on they time. Mm. They only mess with you on their time. Yeah, that's because maybe they're also parents. Also, priorities. Thank you for saying that. Exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. On January 22nd, she wrote, and matter of fact, all of these quotes are not even the ones I'm getting ready to show you. On January 22nd, she wrote, my daughter will be two months, uh, two months old next month. I'm most definitely a proud mommy. The day before she wrote on Facebook, my goal this year for 2024 is to be the best mother I can be to my beautiful daughter and to stay out of drama. Can y'all believe that? This is a mother who placed her daughter in an oven. It's only one or two reasons I could think that you will place your daughter in an oven. One, because you're so dumb and maybe you're just big and wide that you just thought that you was hungry and you thought she was going to put you like a, 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 a roast in the oven or something and stick a... Look how big she is. God damn. <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> Either she was hungry and put the child in the oven looking to make her a meal. Maybe she didn't have no food at the house or option number two. Maybe she's just that damn dumb. She said also to get a place for me and my daughter for only me and my daughter. Why would you have a child and not have your own place? Why would you produce children and not have your own place? I know people do it. I know people get through it. I know people personally that have done it and raised children. I just think that going forward, 
that we shouldn't raise children until we have ourselves stable, prepared to financially provide and emotionally provide for children. That's all I'm saying. Her Facebook profile says she's from Kansas City, Missouri, and adds, leave me alone, mommy of a princess. Her cover photo on Facebook is a picture showing her giving the middle finger to the camera. Let's talk about that, because I'm going to tell y'all this hood stupid mentality. I think that these are indicators of someone, when you look at a picture like this, this shows you she is a bad person. She is a bad parent. She is uncouth and not feminine. Okay, let's take a look at another picture. Oh, I can't do it that way. It's okay. I'm going to just do it like this. Let me show you guys another picture. Let's take a look at this screenshot right here. Just so y'all can see, she said on January 5th, I just love being a mommy. I wouldn't trade it for nothing in this world. I wouldn't trade it for nothing actually as a double negative, which means you actually would. For those who might have caught that. Okay. Now, somebody in the chat actually said four days ago, they said you traded it for a six by six sale, maybe the electric chair. That's some demonic stuff. And I, I, I would have to agree. Okay. Let's talk about this next screenshot. How old is she? What? How, how old did they say? What? 24? She is. She's 26 years old. So she's actually two, two years older than when I had my daughter. 26. Let's take a look at this. On January the 12th, she wrote, the only reason why MFers is effing with me and liking my stuff is because I got a baby now. At first, M. Efforts was talking down on me running my name through the mud. Keep that fake stuff over there because me and Zariah don't want none of that fake love. How many of you guys have watched my channel enough to know how many times have I talked about this thing? Hashtag babies for benefits. So nobody liked her. Nobody talked to her and nobody was a real friend to her until she had a child. So now she gets attention. Now people want to talk to her. Now people feign an interest in a child and still not her. And she feels some type of way about it. Doesn't that sound like babies for benefits? She used this child to get people to talk to her and like her and pay her some attention because as a human being, she sucks so bad, nobody actually wants to be around her. Let's move on to the next screenshot here. And please hit that thumbs up if you guys are watching. We got just over 500 people here. We want to try to get 600 thumbs up to start. So if you guys would, I got a lot, lot more to talk about. Please hit that thumbs up if you're listening, okay? Now, let's talk about this screenshot. From her Facebook page, which is still active. So if you don't like it, y'all can go take a look at the page yourself. There's still probably more that I haven't even talked about. I don't know if y'all can see this. Actually, I could do it like this. Look at what she wrote about herself. Can y'all see this? This is after her child. Now she thinks someone sexually wants her because now she could prove and say, well, look, somebody sexually thought I was attractive. They put it, they, they came in me with an unprotected uh, penis and I made a baby. My fine ass is what she wrote. How narcissistic is that? I think any human being, let alone women, that says that type of stuff about themselves. I'm pretty, I'm beautiful, I'm fine. I know everybody wants me. I think that level of narcissism is unattractive and I think it's dumb and I think it's just a sign of a bad human being. In my humble personal opinion. Let's talk about this. Yep, that screenshot. She wrote on January 13th and on her Facebook page, 
She said, I'm a mother first before anything, so don't ever try and question my motherhood. Do y'all know what that term is called? Do y'all remember AFC? It's called infallible. Infallible. Let me see if I can get Google to tell me. What does the term infallible mean? Here's the definition of infallible, incapable of making mistakes or being wrong. Doesn't that sound like what that is? She said, don't ever question my motherhood. So if she's doing something wrong, you're not supposed to say anything. You see something, don't say something. That's what she's basically doing. Like a lot of bad parents. Let's also talk about... This picture. Look at what she wrote here at the top. I'm a fine ass B I T C H, is what she wrote about herself. I don't care about nobody's opinion. This is the woman who put her child in an oven and turned it on because apparently you mistake it for a crib. And when you put a baby in a crib, you have to turn it on 350 whenever you put your baby in a crib, right? I guess that's pretty normal. Oh, yeah, look at that screenshot right there. And I didn't put that on her eyes. She did. Go look at her page. Go back. She wrote, I don't care. Mentality. Motherly, motherly mentality. Let's talk about this one. <clears throat> we still got the news video, so y'all hold on. There's more to talk about. January 10th, she wrote, my daughter be looking for me. She loves her mommy. Centered, self-centered and selfish. January 10th, she wrote, me and my daughter bond is so close and I'm loving it. This child is barely two months old. To be honest, you really don't know that until your child starts walking. I've done it, raised children, so I know. Again, I want y'all to look. January 16th, what does she write about herself? My fine ASS. She's so cold, so fine. Now that she's, now that she's a parent, now that some dummy, I mean some, some man then had sex with her unprotected. Now she's fine all day long. She admitted it herself. But let me give you guys the fair usage and let me let you take a look at the couple of news videos. Here we go. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And for those who thought that she's using the excuse mental illness, yes, she is, because that's what everybody else is doing. They're getting off on mental illness. So I would encourage you guys to start voting against this. If you guys would do me a favor and please click that thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section. And here we go. Let's talk about it. Kansas City woman made her first court appearance today after Jackson County prosecutors charged her in connection with her baby's death. Last Friday, Kansas City police investigated the suspicious death at a home near East 41st and Forest. Fox News Lexi French explains what we know so far about the case. A Kansas City mother has been charged for allegedly causing the death of her one month old child. Mariah Thomas faces a class A felony of endangering the welfare of a child causing the child's death. Thomas was in court today for her first appearance. Mariah Thomas's bond is set at $200,000. Her bond review hearing is set for February 20th. Hold on, let me pause that real quick. I'm sorry. Somebody did catch that. <clears throat> I just noticed something. Somebody caught what I caught earlier. I forgot I meant to show this on the screen also. So we'll do it now. Beautiful little baby. And I want y'all to notice. What do y'all notice? What's wrong with this baby? I'm a father and I know what's wrong with this picture. I've raised, I've helped raise a bunch of children, but I've raised two of my own biological children. 
plus my third adopted daughter. That baby's diaper is full and it's busting out the seams. Another sign of a bad parent. The nappy has not been changed. Saggy diaper. Let me tell y'all this. Shout out to my daughter's mom because I know that she was very, very particular about making sure that we got diapers that didn't irritate my daughter's skin. But one thing that I did even though sometimes I wanted to go with different diaper brands because my cheap butt didn't have a whole lot of money. But one thing I always did was when she used the bathroom and it was time to be changed, daddy changed her faithfully every time. No question about it. I will waste a diaper in a minute. Big facts. So thank y'all for calling that out. Mariah Thomas's bond is set at $200,000. Her bond review hearing is set for February 20th. The conditions of her bond include no contact with children, medication compliance, and she must complete a mental evaluation. Kansas City police responded to a house near East 41st Street and Forest Avenue on Friday. At the scene, first responders noticed the baby was badly burned. Prosecutors say police were told the mother, Mariah Thomas, was putting her child down for a nap and accidentally placed the child in the oven instead of the crib. This is one of multiple multiple cases in the last two years where a child was killed in Kansas City. The endangerment charge against Thomas comes weeks after Corinne O'Connor was also charged with child endangerment, resulting in the death of her five-year-old son, Grayson O'Connor. He fell to his death from an apartment building. I would encourage our community is just to be aware of what's going on around them. And if you have a concern about the safety of a child, uh, potential abuse or neglect, that you report that to the authorities so that they can investigate and evaluate kind of what's the best next step for those children who might be under those circumstances. Natalie Julian, the president and CEO of CASA of Johnson and Wyandotte counties, works with children in foster care after experiencing neglect in abusive or unsafe situations. We figure out kind of what's going on, how we can help and provide resources and support for those children so that they are able to find safe, loving homes in whatever way that makes sense for them. Jackson County Prosecutor Jean Peters Baker thanked first responders who worked the scene near 41st. Now, moving on to more news from around the world, a horrific incident in the Kansas City has sent shockwaves across the United States where a mother mistakenly put her... And I want y'all to understand, I, I believe that this is a India in the, in the, is it a country or a continent? Oh my God, I'm, I'm about to look stupid. I'm going to say the country of India. <laughs> Geography was not my strong suit. I'm sorry, it wasn't. This is from India, and they're talking about a story in the United States. That's how far this has reached. One month old infant in an oven for a nap, and the baby died. The accused mother, Maria Thomas, has been charged with endangering the child's welfare by the court of law, and the charges were announced by the court on February 10th. The Kansas City police officials reached the crime scene after this horrific incident was reported on February 9th at 1.30 p.m. local time. And according to the document that was filed in the court, Maria told her grandfather that she thought she put the child in her crib and she accidentally put her in the oven. Her grandfather mentioned this to the city police officials and notably the court's records do not show if Thomas has an attorney representing her and if convicted, Thomas could face life imprisonment of 10 years. And this is according to the Missouri state law. We have a friend in the chat that said that this also reached to Australia. That is amazing. So India and Australia, I wonder if there are any other countries that have heard this. Y'all got to think because those countries are large countries and they have a lot of their own stuff that they have going on, especially over there in India. And I'm pretty sure over there in Australia, they have some things they're dealing with. So for these stories to reach that far, it's just the world looking at this like, what are y'all doing over there in America? Why are people behaving this way? Right. A horrific incident in Kansas City has sent shockwaves across the United States where a mother allegedly killed her one-month-old infant by placing her in the oven. The accused mother, Mariah Thomas, has been charged with endangering the child's welfare by the court of law. The charges were announced by the court on February 10th. 
The Kansas City police op officials reached the crime scene after the horrific incident was reported on February 9th at 1.30 p.m. local time. According to the documents filed in the court, Mariah told her grandfather that she thought she put the child in her crib and she accidentally put her in the oven. Mariah's grand and she accidentally put her in the oven. Child in her crib and she accidentally put her in the oven. He thought she put the child in her crib and she accidentally put her in the oven. Mother that she thought she put the child in her crib and she accidentally put her in the oven. Mariah's grandfather mentioned this to the city police officials. Notably, the court's records do not show if a Thomas has an attorney representing her. If convicted, Mariah Thomas could face life imprisonment of 10 years, according to the Missouri state law. For Just because I've been a father in this situation where I had young children trying to take care of them, it's frustrating. It's a lot to deal with, um, especially if you're by yourself. And there were many times, especially during the weekdays, because my daughter's mom worked during the weekdays, that I'd have her. And it can just dealing with a child, your first child, your first experience with this can be difficult. First hand experience. And I'm going to tell y'all, there were just random days that my mother would show up to my apartment where I was living at. And she just, like, she doesn't know that I was like, okay, cool. Like, because I was frustrated a little bit because I didn't know why my baby was crying. I think that's why I like uh, slightly older children, like when they're two years old, when they can start talking and communicating a little bit. Because with babies, it's like. They can't communicate really at all besides crying and hollering. And no matter what you do, that might not fix it. It might not ever be good enough. And there were days my mom would just come by and just come pick her up like I'm about to take her off your hands. And I was like, OK. Talking about that family tree and just how important it is. And that's why for people who have a bunch of children. I don't understand why they do that and then complain about how hard it is when I personally know how hard it is, not only with one, but with two kids. It's hard enough to just raise one. Not only when you raise one, you don't hear this woman in none of her Facebook posts unless you just scroll back, I guess, years ago or whatever. I didn't see a post that her talked about her child's father, baby daddy, husband, nothing. I heard her talk about how nobody wants her. So this sounds like she might, somebody might have accidentally slept with her one time since she's talking about she accidentally put her child in the oven. So I guess they didn't mean to actually sleep with her. How do you, like, first of all, an oven is in a kitchen. An oven you have to open. It is metal. It's cold. It's, it's. You have to pull the 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 um the oven grill out, set the baby on it, push the baby in, you hear it close, it don't sound nothing like a crib, and then turn it on. You gotta go through all of that, and then you will hear the child scream. A blood curdling scream plea for anybody on God's green earth to help her. That is nothing of a crib, which is soft, normally wooden or plastic or, or got the, the little netting around it with a mattress in it, covers, toys, and you don't have to close a crib up and you don't have to turn it on the 350 degrees. The only reason I believe that they're not charging this individual, this alleged human being with murder is because she's saying that wasn't her intention. But if you look at the actions and just say, if you, if this story was switched and she were in my chair and I was in her shoes, and if you looked at this and her with this man by the name of Jay did, you say he needs the death penalty. He absolutely knew what he was doing. And just because he said it was an accident does not mean it was an accident. And you can't charge them just based on what they said as an accident. 
You have to also judge by the merits of the person's actions. And the actions would say that you would absolutely 100% without a doubt not mistake an oven for a crib. That should be a murder charge. That should stick. But I think that they so weak in that court system, judge, prosecutor, whatever you want to call it, forgive me for being honest, but that's my honest opinion. I think y'all are too weak to really dive in and get the correct charges because y'all don't think that y'all going to be able to make it stick. This is murder and there's no way around that. For her to be looking at potentially 10 years at 26 years old, she'll be out of prison before she's even in her mid-30s. 80% of that time, that'd be eight years, potentially. 10 years to life means 10 years, 80%, you'll come up for a parole hearing. And what has she learned? Will she still be able to produce children? Will people still accidentally want to sleep with her and have sex with her just because she's got the parts to be able to do it? Unfortunately, you just don't have enough good men out there to realize that just, just sometimes, man, you just got to say no. Put your, put your dick up and just not do it. All right. But to that baby, I think her name was uh, Zariah. Young princess, let me see if I can get her picture back up here. I don't care, I don't care, middle finger, drunk, no money, looks broke. Look look at that, I can even tell how barren that apartment is. That apartment has zero furniture in it. Zero furniture. And she looks a hot goddamn mess. That bathroom looks freaking disgusting along with her belly. Not ready to be a mother, nor should she ever be a mother. Some people just shouldn't be mothers just because you have the parts to do it. Zariah, young princess, R.I.P. We'll pray for your soul in heaven, and we'll pray that your mother will meet the proper fate here and get the correct judgment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Absolutely unbelievable and no excuse for this. I thought I made a mistake when I was looking on the internet, and I was like, wait a minute, like... This story looks just like the last story I did about a mother putting her child in the oven. And then I realized when I looked at the pictures, that picture in particular, which it's just a difficult thing to look at when it comes to visuals. <laughs> but nonetheless, I thought I made a mistake because I was like, these are the same story. And come to find out it's not. This is actually a completely different story that happened at a very close proximity of time. But also, I realized that, wait a minute, there have been a lot of stories just like this about these mothers who have put their children in ovens. And I'm like, what's going on here? But look, before we get into the details, let me give you a disclaimer real quick. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. And I'm taking this article from Daily Mail just because I think they got few of the uh, more of the details correct. So thank you, Daily Mail, if you guys are out there listening somewhere in the world. But Texas takes another L, and I'm like, sucks. A Texas mother has been arrested after being accused of torching her children, including once trying to put her three-year-old daughter in a hot oven. How, Sway? How? And you still got to be a parent? Y'all are not going to believe what this woman's name is. I almost forgot about this part. When they gave me this name, I thought that this was either the name of a rap song or the name of a rap artist. And maybe this is a normal name, some type of cultural thing. Her name is spelled L-U-L. 
L. Last name Top, T-O-P. I guess that's a normal last name, I guess. Lil Top. And I said, that can't be right. Like, I've actually seen some songs. Like, I think uh, this guy named uh, NBA Youngboy has a song called Lil Top. L-I-L-T-O-P. He wants to get him a Lil Top, right? And when I seen Lil Top as a name, I was like, kind of, what does that name mean? Maybe that's a tribal thing? I don't know. I've never heard of it. This woman's name is Lil Top who's 36 years old, allegedly. She looks much, 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 much older than that. She was arrested after her not one, not two, not three, not four, but five children were removed from her custody on January the 8th after she beat her husband. The roles are switched. How many people think domestic violence is funny? I don't. I don't think it's funny either way. And I think that it should be just as serious either way, regardless of who's the aggressor, whether it's male or female or non-binary or LGTB or QRS TV, whatever the hell you want to call it. I think that domestic violence should just be treated equally. We want equal rights. They told investigators with the Children's uh, Children's Advocacy Center in Collin County about the incident and also claimed that she cut them with knives if they didn't get alcohol for her. The girl's brother, who's 10 years old, told the investigator he had to physically fight off his mother to stop her from putting the girl in the heated oven. He then took his younger sister upstairs and was forced to hide her. The incident was also witnessed by a four-year-old sibling, according to police and an affidavit that was obtained by a local Fox station. After the claims were made by the children, police returned to Top's rental house in the Dallas suburb of Allen, Texas, with an arrest warrant for six counts of felony aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Dramatic video shows a police armored vehicle on the lawn of Top's house with a SWAT officer speaking into a loudspeaker. And I think that you guys could actually see that. I'm going to make it bigger just so you guys can. Well, I guess that's a good picture of it right there. And I also downloaded a video, a live video of it. When you see that, that just looks unreal. It doesn't even look like it's real. It looks like it's something out of a movie. Okay? Now, the dramatic video shows police in the armored vehicle. Come out with your hands up, police blared over the uh, loudspeaker. Top hid in an attic of the house for an hour and finally came out after being deployed, after they deployed chemical weapons. Footage shows the mom being led away in handcuffs. The children said Top would threaten to kill everyone, leading her little ones to hide cleavers from her. They were hiding the knives. Three of Top's children, who were ages 6, 9, and 10 years old, told investigators that she often drank and ordered them to bring her more booze if she ran out. Investigators noticed Top's 3- and 4-year-old children had scars resembling knife cuts. Both children said their mother used a knife to cut them. Does that sound like she loved her children? I'd say no. Not at all. The woman once held a knife to her son's tongue and made him drink alcohol, but he spit it out, according to police documents. Always weird stuff over there. Police were always there, one neighbor told uh, Fox 4. If the police were always there, why did she get to keep the children? So literally they were going to go through all of this when they could have fixed this from the moment that they heard about the situation going on. No parenting classes, no anger management, no Alcoholics Anonymous, no uh, domestic violence training, no nothing. You just get your kids back, stop doing stuff. And she continues to terrorize her children. She just shouldn't be a parent. 
seeing the kids playing out in the backyard by themselves with no supervision and to know that that was actually happening is really sad, according to a neighbor. Police have been called to the home 11 times since January the 1st. So thank goodness at least the children were removed and they were safe. So they just barely came in time in order to save these kids. Top is currently being held at the Collin County Jail under a $600,000 bond. Why does she get a bond at all? It's just beyond me. But let me give you guys the fair usage and we'll go from there. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. If y'all can, do me a favor and please hit that thumbs up, leave a comment too, and let me know what you think about this, and we'll go from there. Allen police say a woman taken into custody this week by SWAT officers during a standoff at a home terrorized her children. What started as an investigation into an assault involving her husband revealed horrific cases of abuse. Fox News' Peyton Yeager is in Allen tonight with more on the story. Peyton. Stephen Allen police tell me they have responded to this Allen home 11 times in this new year. The children, they were removed from the home last month and immediately interviewed. The children told investigators that their mom often would state that she was going to kill all of them. Inside this Allen home off Tanglewood Drive, Police say six children were being tormented by their mother, 36-year-old Lull Top. Top was taken into custody Monday morning after a two hour standoff with Alan Swat. Police were there to arrest her on six felony warrants for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon for what they say she did to her six children. Alan Swat was called in after Top barricaded herself in the attic. Cell phone video pressed her on six. Police were there to arrest her on six felony warrants for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. It literally looks like somebody came in and I didn't want to do it, but her hair looks like somebody came and just took a weed whacker to it and just went nuts. Just She looks bad, man. And crazy. Bad and crazy for what they say she did to her six children. <laughs> Alan Swat was called in after Top barricaded herself in the attic. Cell phone video from a neighbor shows Top with her hands behind her back. <laughs> Court documents show four weeks earlier on January 8th, Police and CPS launched a child abuse investigation when Top's husband called them to the home because she was beating him with a stick and that all of the children witnessed it. Top was arrested. The children were taken into CPS custody and Top later bonded out. The arrest warrant affidavit for the child assaults reveals the terror Top allegedly caused her children. They were interviewed after her arrest for assaulting her husband. They told investigators their mother often drank alcohol, and if she ever ran out of alcohol, she would threaten them. A three-year-old disclosed Top had tried to put her inside the oven that was turned on. Police say one of the siblings, a 10-year-old, started physically fighting his mother to get the three-year-old away from the heated oven. The three-year-old and her four-year-old sibling were asked about scars on their body. Both children told investigators their mother used a knife to cut them. They said their mother would become angry and threaten to cut their hands and fingers off with a cleaver knife if they didn't help her find alcohol. One boy told detectives his mother once held the knife to his tongue. Plus, the boy said his mother made him drink alcohol, but he spit it out. Police said the children took it upon themselves to hide the knives away from their mother. Always weird stuff over there. The police were always there. Neighbor William Whitney says just a few days before the standoff, he had a strange encounter. Whitney says Top and another woman knocked on his door and asked to borrow Wi-Fi. Seeing the kids playing out here by themselves, no supervision, and to know that was actually happening down there is yeah. sad. 
Top is in the Collin County Jail this evening. Again, she's charged with six felony counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon for the violence against the children. Now, I spoke with multiple neighbors who witnessed that SWAT standoff on Monday. They tell me that specific family, they were renting that home in Allen and they moved in about a year ago. Disturbing new details of an assault case out of Allen involving a mother and her children. Cell phone video shows SWAT members at a house where Allen police say a mother threatened her own children with knives and more. Vince Sims has been digging through the arrest documents. Here in this Allen neighborhood, a boarded up door is all that shows any signs of police activity that happened here earlier this week. But it's what police are alleging happened inside the house to children that is so disturbing. People living on Tanglewood Drive say police are familiar with this house. They were, the police were always there and it seemed like they were knocking at the door and you know something something was always going on. The police were all that was the big thing. Oh, they're back. They're back. This is the Allen Police Department. However, Monday morning around 9, things grew more tense with Allen Police Department SWAT team on scene. They were serving six felony aggravated assault with a deadly weapon warrants on 36-year-old Lul Top. Police say the victims were her husband and children. According to the affidavit, last month, Top used a piece of wood from a door frame and caused bodily injury to her husband. That led to forensic interviews with the children, where they reportedly told police Top drinks a lot of alcohol and makes all the children help look for alcohol. Another said Top held a knife to the child's tongue, threatening to cut it off. And another child reported she tried to put her inside the oven that was on. Neighbors often saw the kids, but never the parents. The kids, sweetest kids ever. It's unfathomable. I, I, don't, I don't know how a parent could do that to their kids. After a nearly two hour standoff, Top was found hiding in the attic and arrested. Court records show during her interview, Top denied ever causing harm to the children. If what they're saying is true was happening, then I am so happy for the kids because to get them out of that situation, because it could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse. At last check, Top was still in jail. She has a $100,000 bond placed on each of her charges. In Allen, Vince Sims, NBC5. Court documents indicate Top's husband filed for a protective order against her last week. A hearing on that was set for next week. So with that, what I'm hoping for is that he will get custody and he should never, ever deal with her again. And brother, I'm going to tell you, don't ever let her see those kids for any reason ever again until they are grown. And then when it becomes their own decision, when they can speak and defend for themselves, don't ever let this woman be around those kids because there's no telling how much jail time she's going to get. Do y'all really think that Texas super aggravated uh, child abuse laws are going to work in this situation. I hope it does because I don't want Texas to see color. I don't want Texas to see race. I don't want Texas to see age. I want them to see right and wrong and charge accordingly. I don't want them to look at mental illness, what they were going through, depression, education, position in society, how big their home is. None, none of that should actually matter. But let me show y'all the video, not this one, the next one. I'm going to show you the SWAT vehicle pulling up, like not pulling up, but already out there and uh, screaming at her. I'll show y'all that. It was different. William Whitney thought he'd be getting new neighbors. We hadn't seen the kids anymore because uh, they're always playing in the back alleyway and whatnot and haven't seen them in forever. So we thought they moved out. Turns out the children two doors down left with CPS investigators in early January. Police then accused their mother, Lowell Top, of hitting her husband in the head with a piece of door frame. The police were there constantly, all the time. But in the days following that incident, court documents indicate the six children told investigators their mother cut them, forced at least one to drink alcohol, and repeatedly threatened to cut off their hands or fingers when they couldn't find her more alcohol. The children are between three and ten years old. I would have never in a million years thought that was happening down there. I mean, it's one thing when your kids are out there playing unsupervised as little as they are, but to have that happen, it's like and not even know. According to court documents, one child says they wrestled a younger sibling away from Top, who balled her up and tried to put her in a hot oven. Whitney watched police raid the home Monday. Top is jailed, charged with seven serious crimes of assault today. 
Authorities also reopened two prior felony cases against her because she violated conditions of her plea deal when she was arrested Monday. She'd been serving probation for assaulting a peace officer or judge and assaulting a different public servant. She'd agreed not to drink or do drugs, but the children said she did both, court documents allege. Investigators found cocaine in all six of their systems, too. Unfortunately, I think the public has no idea how much child abuse really exists in our communities. Alcohol and cocaine, isn't that something? Dan Powers can't talk about this case because his children's advocacy center is involved. You said you wonder if she was drinking rubbing alcohol. <laughs> I could imagine because it's just like. You could tell she's, she's missing brain cells, man. This is wild. And where was the father? If he's the husband, I don't know if he was living with her. And if he was, then it sounded like he was being terrorized, especially when she beat him up and she beat up a police officer she's whooping everybody's ass including the kids but he wants she's whooping grown men do you to know what to look for i get asked quite often what if i'm wrong and my response always is what if you're right if a child has unexplained injuries changes in behavior becomes afraid of people or places call 911 or the child abuse hotline at 1-800-252-5400. All six of Topps' children are in the state's care now. In Collin County, I'm Matt Houston. Let me say hello to Sonya. What up, what up? All right, let me show you guys this video real quick. Let me uh, take this off the screen. It's going to be really quick. It's really short, but this is the SWAT video, so give me just a second. 1533 make this bigger so you guys can see it and if you guys are watching do me a favor and please hit that thumbs up i know a lot of you already have so if you're listening thank you very much i think that's about as big as i could i could probably make that all right here we go watch this If you have to go through all of this, I would think that this person should never be allowed to be a parent or be around children. If they're this level of dangerous, why should they ever get a second chance? They're going to end up killing somebody. They're going to take somebody with them. The judge and prosecutors have one job to do, and that is to put her away for life. If y'all fail to do that, when she gets out, she's going to end up ending somebody's life and hurting other people, maybe even another officer or one of your loved ones. So I'm encouraging and employing them to get this right and put her away for life because that's what she deserves. It's just some people don't need a second chance at getting back out in society and potentially harming others. If jail is the only option that we have, then it is what it is. But keep her there and keep her there permanently, okay? Let me know what you guys think. Keep those children in your prayers. And thank God that this is actually a positive story and all the children actually survive. So prayer hands up to all those children, okay? Pray for the Father and hope that he does the right thing. And stop making babies by crazy women, fellas, all right? Come on, man. Y'all got to step y'all game up and do better than this.
ridiculous.